Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, we are in a new episode, although it falls under the same theme, which is, can we teach effectively, or do our teachers teach effectively, or effectively? Yes, this is the main theme. However, the subtopic of today is a little bit different. Before I step into it, I say it, I remember something from last time that we said that it's not enough to be specialized in the subject matter that we talked about now. This is not enough. You need to know other things to be a good teacher. You can have a person who is very skillful in his subject matter, but he does not know how to teach them. And that's why sometimes when they recruit teachers, they insist on seeing how teachers act in class. Right? So they know that they don't see the subject knowledge from interacting in the class, but they see other elements. These things that we are talking about, okay, they measure them. What else? Can I say that the brother's section is more active than the sister's section? A teacher should be a good learner. A good learner, okay. From what we have learned. How would you prove this from what we have learned? Maybe she's observing other teachers teaching. No, or... from what we already studied here, how can you prove your point? This is a very good point. Should be a good learner. Yes. What else? Teachers should always encourage the students to decide for themselves rather than assigning work to them always. OK, this is something very good. We didn't talk about it uh, very clearly. Student, a teacher should encourage a student, but he or she should leave the choice for the students. To this balance, again, encourage, but give them options, give them choices. Don't force them right, to go that, the way that you like. L give them opportunity. And that's why it, one simple thing for that is that you give a list of questions, 20 questions, and ask the students, answer only four, or answer three of them. So they have the, the right to choose. OK? Good. The teacher should be able to plan his lessons well. OK, we didn't come to this yet, but we mentioned part of it. Definitely planning a lesson is quite obvious. Yeah. And uh, he should be able to distinct, differentiate between what subject needs what percentage of the three okay. bifurcations of knowledge, concept, and skill. He should be able to differentiate between that. This brings a new point. But before I say this new point, I have a request from you. I know it's a long day for you. I know that you should be in vacation. But I would request uh, something from you, uh, brothers and sisters. I'm going to mention point number five now. But I want you, when you go home, you think of a design, a graphic design, how to combine all these five things that we learned today in a graphic design to make it simple for others or to make it even simple for you to remember. We will forget very quickly. It may be difficult for me because I repeat this in many workshops, but for you, how can you design a graphic thing that would make it easy for us to remember all these things, the interactivity and the distributive focus. And, and I know that you are skillful in graphic design, so show me your talents. Okay, before you show me this talent, I'll give you point number five, which falls under differentiation. Differentiation. I'll make it very simple for you to understand. In other words, is how to pay attention to or how to handle the individual differences of the student. They said that the teacher has to know the students well. And the teacher should expect that the students he has now, right? For example, you as a sample, are not the same people. You are not on the same level in everything. One of you is good here and not good here. One of you is the same person is good here and not good in others. All of us 
We have one person, for example, here who is not a master of education at all. You know whom I'm talking about, yes. And you know that the rest of you are specialized. So it's natural in any class. And it is not your fault. You're teaching a class, and all of a sudden, one student would join the class, and he came from a public school. He does not have the same information, Islamic information, that the average student has in your class. It's not even the fault of the student. It's not. So, but these are differences. So we have individual differences. All of us, it's almost impossible to find two people identical, perhaps in appearance, but not in the way we think in the way we act, in the way we understand. OK, and based on this, one important job of a teacher who is good, not even good, he may be excellent or outstanding, right, is differentiation. He makes differentiation in his or in her teaching in the classroom. He does not deal with all students the same, right? The simple example of this, if you know that this student memorized five surahs and the other students memorized 20 or 22 verses or chapters so they know more than him so when you ask him don't ask him right it becomes very difficult for him to memorize surah number 24 or 20 why because he didn't go into these series of surahs so when you ask him questions select the question that would match his ability you are reviewing so select the question, and when you ask a question to him, direct the simple question or the question that are related to his background. So that means that a teacher, this is one of the toughest things for the teacher, is to know his or her students well. To know that they are skillful in this and this and this, but here they are not skillful, right? And this also related to differentiation, something is called remedial work. If you know that this student needs help in the memorization of the Quran, so you need to address this special need because now he has a special need, which is he needs to memorize more in order to reach the same level. So this requires a remedial work. How to do this remedial work? This is something different. Yes, we may talk about it uh, yes, in details later. Uh, one example is that you can make extra lessons, right? One example is that you for example, one of the good students in the classroom, when he finishes, for example, his work very quickly, you can let him sit with this student separately. You can isolate them, and he can help him to memorize. Yes, you can do different things, and you can think of different things. But the most important thing is that you yeah, make this differentiation. As we mentioned, that you look at, uh, yes, distributive focus, three things. We will use number three again here. Look at your students. They are in three categories. The high achievers or the quick learners, right? Or the high ability students versus what? Versus the low ability students or the slow learners or whatever you call them. And in the middle, the majority of the students. If you have a class of 20, usually, 15 of them, or close to this number, 15 fall in the middle, the average student. And only few are on the top. This is the bell. You know the bell for? This is it. Very few people here and there, and the majority of them are in the middle. 15 or more students are in the middle, and only two or three here or there. OK. But these are key figures in the classroom. It's either you ignore them, and those students, after some time, they go, yes, beneath the level, and they cause problems to the society. And I gave some examples yesterday. And those ones, if you don't care for them, right, they will not be able to be leaders. They have the potential to be leaders, but you don't address these potentials. So now, again, the three things that you have to program yourself. Now, how can we apply this differentiation in our classroom. How can we do this? Can I hear some? For example, in teaching, in the homework, in the project, in the exam, how can we apply this? If there's no answer, I will answer. If you have some answers, give me the answer. Yes.
So while giving the project, I may mix and blend. I may have a gifted child with a slow learner and two, three average students. So it's a group of, you okay. know, a balanced group. When we group students in that format, which is one good leader, right, one high level student, two average and one low, okay? What are we doing here? I want you to, yeah. What are we doing? If you put them in one group, yes? I would like to comment. I think we are making the low learners and the average students dependent on the high achiever. Okay, now we are opposing each other. I love that, give it to back to her. So, we want to see a fight, right, okay? Okay, before we, the fight continues, we'll take a break, take our breaths and come back after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Oh. Welcome back after the break. Let's continue the debate, not the fight, okay? So I'll give you a live example. Okay. I teach Islamic studies in the lower classes. And we have a subject called Dua. Dua translation, the basic daily duas. And I do the translation, the Arabic Ustad, they do the Dua in Arabic. And there's a group of children, they don't memorize. No matter how much ever you do, you know, give them enforcement or okay. punishment or whatever so i have uh, blended the class uh, you know uh, segregated them and uh, in each row there's a leader there are some average students the slow learners in each row and then as team work the leaders they make the others study but i want you to listen all of you this technique is wonderful but but here this is not the target one of the benefits of this is what we mentioned earlier yes Students learn from their peer group more than they learn from you. Peer teaching. Because of the gap of the age and the culture. They have different culture than you. You cannot communicate with them very well. They communicate with each other very well. And based on this, we make this design, right? So this is a wonderful design when we want to communicate things to the children that we feel that we cannot communicate them. So we divide the students into these groups. However, this does not fall under differentiation. Yes, why is this? The loser in this setting is who? Who is the loser in the setting that she described? Huh? Is the high achiever. He is the one who loses. The others benefit from him, but he does not benefit. He does not have enough opportunities to develop his skills and potentials. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said that this model, which is good, beneficial in many ways, but it doesn't serve the topic that we are talking, differentiation. In differentiation, we need to put students according to their level. These are the high achievers, these are the middle achievers, and those are the low achievers, right? We put them together. However, I know that there are many comments here. Please go ahead and now we're talking now. In the middle of my talk, somebody wants to inject something. Which is very good. We won't, that's what I'm eager for. We want to teach you to do this. We want you to teach students to do the same thing. Yeah. I was just suggesting another way in which everyone, uh, you can cater to different learners. Yeah. By not actually segregating them. Okay. So that they feel like, you know, because when I did that, I had divided the class into three groups. Okay. Like blue, square, red, triangle, and green. And the red triangle was supposed to be the high ability group. Okay. So although the child was in the blue circle, according to his ability, he didn't want to be there because he felt very inferior. Okay. So he was not uh, focusing on his ability. He just wanted to be in the red triangle group. Very good. So uh, we can just give them a sheet. Okay. It's a worksheet. And the high ability group focuses on the extension task. It's the last task on the sheet. Yes. So everyone starts from top to bottom. Yes. However, only the red triangle achieves the extension task. Very good. So nobody feels like, you know, I'm not capable. Absolutely. I will handle this issue. But the main objective is that, first of all, to put them according to their abilities. Okay? If you find a student like this, right, he's in the middle and he wants to be in the high, put him with the high students. Put him there. Sit, let him sit there. Right? Uh, so in this way... Right, he it will be more challenged. And if he can cope with this, that would be wonderful. But the issue is, okay, this is one way of doing it. Nobody knows in the class that those are the high achievers and those are the low achievers. It's only you. It's only you. You should not make any implication that these are high achievers, right? 
You see what I'm saying? If the students try to understand it, they would say, okay, I think those students are better than I am. I would say, that's fine, this is his understanding. But you don't spell it out. Okay, the second thing that you mentioned here, the nature of, so we're differentiating now by asking them to sit uh, differently. And when, when they sit differently, the most important um, thing is what? We give them different tasks. And all the tasks should be challenging, one step ahead. So the one step ahead of the high achievers is different from the one step ahead of the middle achievers, right? Am I correct? Okay, so they, have, they fall into this category. So I need to give them a question that's a little bit above this category. Whereas those people are in this category, so I need to give them a question here. Okay, how can we do this without making them feel it? One paper has plenty of questions, and I would say, this group would answer question number one and five. This group would answer questions three and 10. This group would answer question number 11 and four, whatever. You see what I'm saying? You are the one who designed the question, so you put them in a way that you know, right, exactly that one and four is the toughest questions, right? You are the one who knows. Students wouldn't be able to do this. And even it's not necessary to put them in the extension because everybody knows that this is the easiest and this is another way of doing it. Right. Answer as many questions as you can. Put the list of questions, the easy and the difficult, whether in order or not, and ask the students to answer as many questions as you can. This is a way of exams, by the way, in America, very famous. The most important thing is that you should know your students, not by your memory, right? by the evaluation sheet that you all the time you carry with you. The evaluation book, call it whatever. Yeah. And I said that all this is based on the diagnostic exam, and we'll elaborate on this later. If you have a well-designed diagnostic exam, it will give you clear idea about your students. Because in the beginning of a semester, in the beginning of a year, you don't know your students. You have to begin with something. This thing that in the diagnostic exam, it will give you a little bit clear idea, right? And then during teaching, you will modify this. You will say, okay, this student is, is no longer 80% student. No, this is 85%. So you will write your note beside that. And this sheet of paper that talks about evaluating students, it should always be all scratched because you make a comment here, you make, yes, a reference here to the lesson that he perfected or not, or to the skill he perfected or not. And that's why we say that even the diagnostic exam should be classified into the three things that we mentioned, which are knowledge, concepts, skills. In the homework, again, the same thing, the same list of paper, but I say that you can answer this and this and this, and you can answer this and this and this in the assignment in the projects that they work. And the concept of projects should be vivid in our minds. Yes, there are some projects that are done in a week, in a semester, in a whole year, and you should have this in your mind. All the time, yes, ask the students to work on a project that you get it from them at the end of the year. And during the year, from time to time, you are meeting with group A or group B or group C from time to time to see what they have done in in their project. I took a course in USA, and it was about, okay, just try to think. Take an area of technology and tell us what will happen after 20 years. The whole thing is about this. And every month we meet with the professor, and he would check, yes. And of course, the, the first paper he would give us zero in it. He could go, this is rubbish, yeah. Yes, and they would go back, yes, and refine it and come back to him and try to find research. So all the year, they say he was not teaching anything. This is exactly what he's doing. He's spending most of his time meeting with us to see what we have done, what progress we have done. So you can think of something like this. Ask the student to bring something, to come up with an idea, like the idea of a magazine, for example, like the idea of coming up with a book. Can you write up a book? Okay, can you make an illustration? that explains the relationship between something and something, like what I gave you now, for example. Yes, make a design, graphic design, to explain this concept, okay. So you have a project that can be done in a week, a project that can be done in semester, 
another project that can be done, yes, in a year. You can see now that the teacher is no longer the center of knowledge. The teacher, even himself or herself, needs to be equipped with a lot of skills that even he or she may not have. That's why they may ask the principal, we need special workshop in this skill. We need to acquire this skill. Yeah, anybody, any comment? So we said that we have to differentiate between them. And now, yes, we want to give, if you, have, if you don't have any comments, any comment? People don't want to make any comment. Please do. I like the first comment between the two sisters. Yes, this is exactly what we so I want, because this is the old model that they used to tell us differentiation to make it in that format. And it seems that those who taught us did not understand exactly what differentiation meant. And again, because differentiation is a concept, it's not knowledge. It has to have very clear understanding in our mind. Most of the teachers don't understand this concept, by the way. Or even if they do, they don't know how to apply it in their life. So again, this concept of uh, differentiation is related to remedial work. And definitely the assignment that's given to this child should be different from the assignment that's given to another child. Because each one of them would go at his own pace. You try to encourage, you try to push, right? And see, because sometimes when you encourage, you find the student is jumping from here to here to here. And how many times we have heard about students would finish the high schools in 15 years, for example. And some students would finish the university in two years, not in four years, had they been given the opportunity. Yes, even I designed a whole program this, of how to graduate Muslim uh, imams or Muslim students in two years' time. It's the same amount of knowledge that's taken in four years, but under a certain context, you can graduate them in two years if you know how to use the time well. There's a lot of losses in our time. Yes, especially, for example, I'm talking about the Arab countries. I'm sorry for the Arabs. But this is exactly what's happening. They take lots of vacations. For example, in some countries, they take the summer vacation. In the last few years, because of Ramadan, they used to almost four months. Four months loss from the life of every student, multiplied by the number of students in that country, you can see the amount of losses. Again, this brings back the concept of time management on different levels, beginning in your class, at home, the losses of time that uh, pass from our life. Okay, inshallah, this would be the end of it. Uh, and I advise you again to review what we have studied before so that it becomes easy for us to find the link. I think now the link between the four elements that we mentioned is clear, right? The differentiation now is based on what? Based on, can you link it with any of the five elements? Can you link it with any of the five elements, the other four elements? Differentiation and... Huh, variety of use, teaching methods. A wide variety of teaching methods. We are using a wide variety of teaching methods to address those different levels of students, okay? So this is just a link between them, and you will understand that there is a link between all of them. Uh, it's over now. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A little baby, pure and small. He created you, he created us all. Hush, little baby, don't you fear. We're never alone when Allah's so near. Hush, little baby, breathing so calm. He'll protect us all and keep us from harm. Hush, little.